Hi guys, N0ECK here. Today I'm going to talk about something a lot of hams get wrong. Even if they understand it, they may use the wrong words and it gets really confusing. And I'm not an electrical engineer, so I might get it wrong too. But this is how I understand antenna matching and electrical resonance. So what is resonance? Wikipedia says electrical resonance occurs in an electric circuit at a particular resonance frequency where the imaginary parts of impedances or admittances of circuit elements cancel each other out. In some circuits this happens when the impedance between the input and output of the circuit is almost zero and the transfer function is close to one. Resonance circuits exhibit ringing and can generate higher voltages and currents than are fed into them. After looking at the Wikipedia page for electrical resonance, I got even more confused about how this relates to antennas. How could a piece of wire have resistance, capacitance, and inductance? When it relates to antennas, the resonant point has the lowest impedance and has no imaginary component, aka it's a purely resistive load. For example, an antenna that's too short exhibits some capacitive reactance, an antenna that's too long has some inductance. The trouble with this is that I don't know of a single antenna that's actually resonant and provides a 50 ohm load to the transmitter without some kind of matching. An ideal half wave dipole exhibits a resistance of about 73 ohms which is a perfect match for TV coax. A folded dipole has a resistance of about 300 ohms which is a great match for TV twin lead. Hmm. A quarter wavelength vertical is closer to 35 ohms depending on the ground plane, radials, and height above average terrain. Either way, all of these antennas need some kind of matching to work with ham gear. In every YouTube video on antennas, you'll always see the obligatory shot of the antenna analyzer with no SWR. Does that mean the antenna will work? Yes and no. There's also an article in the ARRL antenna book about how you can work the world on a light bulb. I suggest every ham reads that article. SWR is just the ratio of real impedance to ideal impedance. If you have 50 ohms at the antenna, no matter if it's resistive or reactive, it will show a one-to-one -one SWR. If you had an ideal dipole with 75 ohms of purely resistive impedance, it would show 75 to 50 or 1.5 to 1 SWR. The reading would be about the same with the vertical. 35 to 50 is pretty close to 1.5 to 1. So how do we make our transmitter happy? For a dipole, we can just dip the ends closer to the earth and that gets it closer to 50 ohms. For a vertical, we can put some capacitive or inductive reactants across the feed point to bring it up to 50 ohms. For almost every other antenna, we can use an antenna tuner. <laughs> antenna tuners can be thought of as a way to add capacitance or inductance to the antenna to make the transmitter happy. This doesn't keep the feed line happy, but we can talk about the joys of ladder line later. <laughs> Older tube type transmitters had a Pi network as their output circuit. This was adjustable by the operator and would load up almost any antenna. Back then, hams didn't have SWR meters or a house full of electronics that were sensitive to RFI. The most common type of antenna tuner out there right now is the T-match circuit. It has a variable inductor, either a switched inductor or a roller inductor, and two variable capacitors. The T-match is an unbalanced circuit, so it requires some sort of balance for balanced antennas or feed lines. Another unbalanced matching network is the simple LC network. Either the capacitor or the inductor, or both, can be variable in this situation. If I were building a matching network at the feed point of an antenna, I'd choose an LC network. One of my favorite antennas uses another form of matching, an impedance transformer. The feed point impedance of an end-fed half-wave antenna is between 4 and 5,000 ohms. And to make the transmitter happy, we have to step that down to 50 ohms. This is the same method used by impedance matching balance like a 4 to 1 balance or a 9 to 1 balance. So hopefully you didn't come away from this even more confused, and if you did, that pushes you to do a little research and study. Remember, even a dummy load has perfect SWR. 7-3, join the resistance.